Welcome to A New You Makeover, Upgrading Human Potential. I'm Megan and I invite you to join the anti-aging revolution. Before we begin, let's connect to our home frequency as we expand our consciousness and become limitless. Let's place our hands on our hearts. Take a deep breath. We ask to resonate in the frequency of eternity as we create our new earth reality. Thank you. I love you. It is done. Now let's start living our highest potential. I'm so excited to have Christalia, on, Christalia Marie on the show today. She began her self-healing journey in the, her mid-20s, and yet her real healing didn't begin until 2000, when after years of working on self-worth, self-love issues, she discovered an underlying belief that had kept her from loving herself fully. In 2001, her faith and self-love were tested when she discovered a golf ball-sized lump in her breast. After doing all that she knew and trying many alternative healing methods, she was guided to create Christographs, which are colored drawings. And it was during that one brief session that removed the lump. She subsequently had various ailments, such as a bladder infection, yeast infection, hypothyroidism, deep vein thrombrosis, cancer, and more. And in each of these, she immediately received Christographs to heal the ailment. She is the best-selling co-author with Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra et al. in the Wake Up book series, author of the One Minute Energy Tune-Up book series, products, and former radio talk show host. We are so excited to have you. Welcome to A New You Makeover. Well, thank you, Megan. I'm really excited to be here today. Awesome. So I know that you have, you have an amazing story, and I know you've gone through a lot. And you were able to take your own struggles, walk through that uncomfort, move all the way through them to find healing, and now you're using that to help others. And that took a lot of perseverance, self-love, and um, I think for you, I've heard you say that self-love was a critical piece of your own journey. So tell us why self-love is so important. Well, I think the key here is to understand that when we don't love ourselves, when we don't build our self-esteem and our self-love, we give away our power to everyone else. We don't believe we're worthy. We don't believe we're good enough. All of those things. And we're told that from the time we're little kids. And when we claim our self-love, we start to live our own authentic journey. We don't give up our power anymore. It's not like we're dismissive of others. It's not like we're, um, you know, narcissists or anything like that, but we care about ourselves enough to take care of ourselves, which actually gives us more energy to be able to actually help others versus so often we give up so much and then we wear ourselves out and we really can't be of help to anybody then. So that's why I think self-love is so critical in our journey for men and women. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think most women are the ones that we really give up our power way too much. Well, and I think sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it or we think we're acting in self-love, but we're not. Yes. So for you, when was that, what was it that kind of catapulted that for you that made you realize I'm not really putting self-love first or how do I find that self-love? Well, I was uh, in a slightly abusive relationship with my first husband and uh, I walked away from that relationship after he hit me one day and his mother pulled me aside and I laugh about this now but she pulled me aside and she said she saw this happen okay and I walked out of the house went to the local bar and had a few drinks they couldn't find me anywhere right finally I came back and the next day or so she saw me and she pulled me aside and she said if he ever does that again it's not okay hit him over the head with a frying pan when he's sleeping <laughs> okay <laughs> i didn't follow her advice but anyway um following that i left that relationship and i got involved with this guy and i realized it was going to be even more abusive it was already getting really out of control and uh i actually broke off the relationship the guy showed up at my door well i had a whole group of friends and family over visiting and because of that, I let him in because I didn't want a scene, okay? 
And then when everybody else left, again, I thought there'd be a scene if I asked him to leave, so I didn't, and it ended up, he fell, he fell asleep. I thought, okay, he'll get up in the morning, he'll be fine, I'll get him to leave. He was drunk when he got up in the morning, and after eight hours or more of abuse, he beat me up and stabbed me. Oh, my goodness. And I found a way to get out of the house and get away from him after two times of trying and him actually threatening to kill me in front of my neighbors because they didn't know what was going on. And, of course, I smiled and waved when he was like, I'm going to stab you right here type of thing. Anyway, I got away from him, and then I started really going deep with the therapist at that point, and he started working with me on self-love and self-esteem and all of that, and it was a journey. I mean, it took me years to actually get past it, and as you mentioned in the intro, in 2001, my self-love was tested. Well, prior to that, I had discovered all this time I was doing all these affirmations. Everybody teaches all these affirmations. And here I was doing all these affirmations about loving myself and doing them in the mirror and all this stuff. But I was still like in abusive relationships with my employers and all the rest, right? And um, this teacher said to me, well, let's muscle check that, you know, you think you love yourself. And I miserably failed, as I like to say. And if you don't know what muscle checking is, you're checking the strength of a muscle to see if it's a yes or no answer. And all I did was say, I love myself fully. And I failed. And we discovered a belief that God would punish me if I loved myself. Interesting. That was the belief, your underlying belief system. Right. So I could say I love myself fully forever, but my subconscious said, really, you want to do that? God's going to punish you, right? And so that was really the breakthrough that really changed me into what I now call the self-love enthusiast. <laughs> I love that. What a lot you had to go through to get to that point. So you worked with the therapist, you found that underlying subconscious belief system. So then what were your next steps? Well, interesting. Once I got to understanding what that unconscious belief was, there she taught a process that was called bridging and i teach it as well in my work and that is to bridge from where you are forward so i actually did like i desire god's love when i love myself i deserve god's love and then build from there just keep i desire i deserve i'm receiving god's love i love myself i desire to love myself i deserve to love my so on so you bridge from where you are and sometimes that can be 70 affirmations and the way she taught it, it was a 21-day process. You did it twice a day. You also wrote it in ink and all that. When I started getting my symbols, I asked for a faster process, which we can talk about maybe later. But, um, yeah, that's what I did, though, was I bridged those to get to the point where I could change that belief and test positive that I love myself fully. <laughs> But it's, you know, and it sounds amazing, right, when you get to the other side and you've walked through that uncomfortable, but it ha probably was not easy to get through all that and keep that work going. Because I think right. we're always looking for proof or we expect that immediate result. Like, I'm healed. I did it once. It's all better, I believe. But as you're saying, it's not always, um, it takes some work. And I think working with our subconscious. Well, you're working with your subconscious and you're also wanting to be aware of what is it you're doing in life that supports the belief you're trying to change to. Are you falling back into the old pattern or are you moving forward into the new pattern that you want? Because that's another part of it. And I encourage people to actually find a partner, someone that can be loving and supportive and fun and have them reflect to you when you're saying the negative things, when you're beating yourself up, when you're not even aware you're doing so. And do it with fun. Like I have one friend and I say the word, I should do this, I should do that quite often. I still do. I was a lot less, but this one friend of mine, she'll say to me, you shouldn't, don't shit on yourself, Crystal. <laughs> I love that saying. <laughs> and I typically do things like, you're not allowed to beat up, beat up on my friend Megan. <laughs> You know, hands on hips, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things like that to make it fun so it's not like you're feeling like you're being beat up, but you're being reminded that you're not treating yourself loving and supportive, and you're not doing what you want to do by supporting the beliefs you're trying to create and that you're trying to live your life by. 
Absolutely. And I know what you're, what you're saying too, is it's something else I know you, you um, really care about and value is that victim mentality. And so what you're doing is you're choosing not to be the victim of your circumstances, not to be right. a victim of others or being in this abusive relationship and placing blame. So talk a little bit about that mentality. Well, that mentality comes down to forgiving not only that other person, but forgiving yourself as well. And to me, that's a really big key in the healing process. And my line is, when I can get to the point where I can send that other person love, visualize them and send them love, that's when I know I have really healed that issue and I don't have to work with that one anymore. Um, but to me, that's so important that we do get past that victimhood, own the part, our part of what happened, just like my self-sabotage of allowing that man back into my house, not allowing the fact that, oh, there might be a scene. Well, at least there would have been a scene with a bunch of people, right? Probably none of us would have gotten hurt, right? But, you know, that was my self-sabotage. So being able to not be the victim, own the part you played in that, but not beat yourself up. I'm not saying beat yourself up, but own that part. And also, don't give them your power. If you're being the victim, frankly, you're giving them your power. Just like a lot of people say, I could never forgive them. I'm like, well, all oh, the only person you're hurting by doing that is you, not them. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, and it's hard sometimes, but it's important. I think it's very important. And it also ties back into our thoughts, our words have power. Mm -hmm. And so remembering that if you believe that you're the victim, then you are the victim. And you have to not only, it's, it's all intertied, the victim mentality, right. self-love, but choosing to believe that desire. What do you desire? And truly believing it and seeing it act out in your reality. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's so true is that uh, we act out what we keep saying over and over again, because we and we keep recreating it until we move beyond the victim mentality. If you're claiming you're a victim, you're going to keep creating more victim <laughs> type of experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. So your Christographs, I'm so fascinated. I want to learn more about these. So you had your own kind of awakening moment, that turning point with the, the abuse situation. And then um, when was it that the Christographs came in? So shortly after I learned about the, the self-love belief that God was going to punish me, I moved to Sedona. And right after I moved to Sedona, I discovered a golf ball sized lump in one of my breasts. So at that point, I was one of that particular healer's practitioners. So I did everything I knew with her processes and nothing was changing. And living in Sedona, you have a plethora of healers. <laughs> So I started going from healer to healer to healer and nothing was changing. And one day I was in this medical intuitive's office and I'd been there a few times and she'd given me some insights, but still nothing was changing. And she said to me, you know, you need to draw those images floating in your aura. And my father had been a professional artist and he had totally convinced me I couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler, much less anything else, okay? So I remember rolling my eyes and saying, yeah, right, whatever, have a good day. <laughs> and uh, the next day or the day after during meditation, I started seeing all these images and I downloaded 65 or 66 images that day. So in that minute when you said you saw those images, she had said she saw them in your aura, but you hadn't seen them yet. Right. I had not seen them yet. I had no idea what she was talking about. And so there I was, like, doodling these things and saying to spirit, what's this one for? Oh, we'll tell you later. Well, is it colored? Yes. What colors? We'll tell you that later. So all they were were, like, these 65 little doodle things. And then I started finding out, like, the first one was called Love and Trust, and it was about trusting the process and how I was told what colors to make it and what to do with it and so on. And within a couple of weeks, I got one that looked like, well, the one that was called the Angel of Self-Nurturing, which breasts are all about nurturing. So that wasn't a big surprise. But I still didn't know what I was going to do with these. And I don't know, three or four weeks into it, I ended up getting one that looked like a jellyfish. 
I'm like, what's this one for? And I heard, take it to the medical intuitive. It'll remove the spider, uh, the poison from her spider bite on her arm, which she had been trying to do for a period of time. So I told her what to do, and she's like, oh, my God, it's gone. She's like, I just know it's already gone. So I went home, and the next day I'm in meditation, and Spirit says, you know, you could also use that to remove that lump from your breast. So I said, well, how would I do that? So I, get, I was given a process, and the three symbols, the, the self-love or the um, love and trust, the angel self-nurturing, and that one were to be used. And I was guided how to use that jellyfish thing to literally get it to wrap its tentacles around the lump, suck it into its sac, and heal the tissue on its way out. And in 20 minutes, it was gone. The lump was gone. Yes. Were you just like? Yes, so to the point, I didn't even check until the next morning. I was like, there's no way it could truly be gone. And the next morning, I'm doing this. And I'm like, oh, I guess it really is. So yeah, I, I was in pretty much disbelief that it could happen that quickly. And I had been trying to get this healed for over a year at that point. Right. And what year is this? Just curious. 2001 into 2000 into early 2002 that's right okay yeah that's just incredible so then as you continued as you did that and you healed yourself what came next did you just start to get more downloads or did you start to utilize those original 65 well i utilized the love and trust one and that was really the only one and then as i started getting other problems physical problems that i was aware of like i get a bladder infection and i'm like okay what do i do about that now you know something i recognized i'd had in the past and they guided me to which one of the drawings to do this one but color it this way here's what you do i'd quickly do it and in 20 minutes that bladder infection's gone. And it was just one after another. And uh, one of the big final ones was the deep vein thrombosis, which I'd never had. And I ended up in the hospital because I was in a room where there were all these medical people are like, you can't risk this. And I'm like, don't worry, the symbols will take care of They're like, hospital now. <laughs> and it was actually diagnosed. And while I was I was energetically downloaded it just as an image. I didn't have nothing to write. I didn't have colored pens and all that. I heard and saw what, what I was supposed to do and uh, later drew it. But, <laughs> but I visualized it and removed the, the uh, whatever you call that, the deep vein thrombosis, the blockage in the artery. And they did diagnose that one. Um, so that was scary. And then after that, I said, you know, I'm tired of being the guinea pig. So can I share this with others now? <laughs> right. Can someone else have an ailment? And it's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then you did. So you just started to work on other individuals as they came forward? It, well, friends initially and had, had lots of them have experiences that they liked and started giving me testimonials. And then I started sharing it with others and learning how to get it out on the Internet and all of that. So, yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> It sounds like it. What a beautiful gift, though, and for you just to to follow that, because I know that's not always easy to trust, as you were saying, and to just take what you're receiving and to really test it and trust it and keep going through it. Well, that's really the key is trusting it. I literally, after that, lost all of my money, <clears throat> almost lost my home, but was guided through a, a bunch of different things that I trusted and ended up not losing the home, but pretty much was without any money when all was said and done. And, and yet, you know, got another job for 40, at $40,000 in six weeks right after I got rid of my house. And, and it's just been a journey ever since. So, but that love and trust has been a key to just trust that the pro, trust in the process. And it's a learning journey and it's not like, Anything really bad has happened, but I've had some good scares. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. It's just, it's a great story. So when you're working with individuals now, you know, and the work you're doing, I know you do the Christographs. What else are you doing with them? Well, I'm teaching them how to go into finding the underlying core belief and the underlying emotions that are related to whatever's going on. Because in my my feeling is that there is always some underlying blockage in the energy field 
there is some underlying emotion and belief that's related. So if we treat ourselves as body, mind, and spirit, we get full recovery versus a lot of times people will have cancer as an example and they'll go into remission, but if they didn't deal with the underlying pieces, then it comes back eventually. And what I find is more permanent results by having the whole picture, not just part of the picture. Absolutely. That's awesome. So if someone wanted to find you and, you know, we're at home, tell our listeners how they can connect with you and learn more about your work in Christographs. Well, they can connect with me on my website and I do have some free gifts on, not only on the website, but I think, uh, I think the best place for them to go, actually, if they'd like some boundless energy, <laughs> I have a free gift called energytuneup.com. If they just go there, they can just get that free gift. It puts them on, it puts you on my newsletter as well, but you actually get to get some symbols and try them out. And um, if you don't like them, unsubscribe, no big deal. <laughs> but it is a way to try them out, and it includes an energy symbol that if you're in, have you ever been in one of those meetings where you're like falling asleep because it's so boring? Yeah. There's a symbol in that pack that you can hold against the skin of your non-dominant hand in that boring meeting. It'll keep you awake. <laughs> I think we all need that. <laughs> uh, I've tested it a few times. Can you tell? <laughs> uh, so, you know, and then my website is empoweredspirit.com. Awesome. So I will link to them in the show. But for those of you listening, um, empoweredspirit.com. And then remind us again of the free symbols website. Yeah, that's energy tune up, E N E R G Y tune up, T U N E U P.com. Awesome. Yeah. And that way people can get to experience the work. Uh, back to your question before about how else I work with people. I have products and I like to empower people. That's why my website is called Empowered Spirit. So I actually prefer that people get some of my products and do some of the work themselves and reach out to me when they're stuck. Mm -hmm. Rather than get dependent on me, that's not how I work. I mean, if you really need my help, I'm here and we'll do a session and I'll help you get past it, help you get deeper. But for most people, they find when they're working with the work, they can get deep enough on their own. I had a woman recently that had um, cervical cancer and she emailed me a couple times and asked a couple questions. We never did do a session, but she bought the book that was on that subject and in three months totally cleared. That's amazing. That's just amazing. And I think yeah. sometimes it's just believing that we can mm -hmm. heal ourselves because we can, but you have to truly believe. Well, that's the other thing. I hate even calling myself an energy healer because I'm not the healer. I am just the channel for the healing and you really are your own healer. And I want to empower people to know we all have our own ability to heal ourselves. It's a question of knowing it, accepting it and doing the work to do it. Absolutely. That's such a beautiful message. And I think we need to remember that because we, you're right, you have to do the work as an individual and mm -hmm. no one's going to do it for you. They can assist or be a path, but it's really on you right. to believe and be your healer. Oh, well, right. Thank you so much for your time uh -huh. today and sharing your story and connecting with our listeners and our community. Um, yeah, it's just been so amazing. So thank you. Yeah. Are you ready to create a new you? Are you ready to transcend beauty and reprogram what it means to age? We invite you to learn more about how you can start resonating in the frequency of eternal youth and join the anti-aging revolution. Visit eternalgoldbeauty.com to find out how you can become the new you. Well, thank you to everyone for listening today and to Cristalia for your time and beauty and story and um, everyone have a great day. Blessings.